Welcome back, friends, to another episode of the Young Hangout Rod Shop. Today, we're going to be dealing with something uniquely not Young Hang related again. Uh, this one goes to the GX compressors. Everybody, it's ordered one, uh, CS2, CS3, probably the one and the four as well. Um, you get this cord and you get this AC supply right here. And, you know, nothing special here, but you have to, you, when you plug this in and you plug it into the wall, this thing immediately comes on. You've got no control over the power on this guy. And that kind of drives me nuts. Um, I'm not exactly a control freak, but having the ability to turn this on and off would be kind of nice. So we're going to add that today. We're going to show you two ways to do it. One of them is more expensive and takes more work. The other one is easier, faster, and cheaper, but I don't think it looks as cool. Uh, so anyway, let's get to it. We're going to get the overhead view here on the workspace and show you how this is done. And I might use a pellet gun against that freaking rooster. Anyway, let's get to it. Okay, folks, here's a cord set. Typical, it comes with the uh, GX line of compressors. It, uh, they really don't take much power on the AC side. Um, so nothing real big deal going on here. It's not, uh, not heavy gauge wire or anything. Uh, so this cord set, we're going to turn into a switched cord set by adding this really swanky, but relatively inexpensive, uh, switch it claims to be waterproof and you know perfect for marine environments not that that really matters in this case but i just thought it looked really dang cool um, and it does have some nice easy mounting tabs um, if you want to mount it to something these are these are pretty nice they're not expensive i think they're they're less than 15 bucks they do claim to be lighted but i have to say these are sold to the world market and they're meant to run on everything from 240 down to 110 and when you're running these on 110 um, that led the only way you'll see it is at night so don't expect uh this switch to keep you up at night because it's probably not gonna uh light wise um one other thing i want to talk to you about is these screws that come on these things uh they are they are the devil's work they're they are meant for just loosening up and sticking a wire in there and then clamping it down. And honestly, uh, these do not inspire a lot of faith in me as an electrical connection. What is really nice is these tabs are the perfect size for spade lug connectors, which I feel a lot better about, and they're insulated. So that's what I'm going to use. So do yourself a favor. If you do buy one of these things, get rid of these godforsaken screws. Um, if you try to use eyelet connectors on these and try to get these screws and this nut plate on the other side, you're going to, um, you're going to curse yourself into a problem. It's going to take you all day on Sunday to get, to get rid of it. Um, not, not what I recommend. Anyway, get rid of those screws. And then if you notice, I've got two of these tabs going out and two of them kind of bent very slightly in. You'll see why in a minute. It just allows me to put these on in a way that it, it reduces the amount of, of wire curl in and around the switch, which makes fitting it back in the enclosure easier. But let's get to the cord modification. So we got to decide roughly where we want our switch to be. I want mine to be right about there. So the switch is closer to the business end. This is the business end. This is the load side. And this is the supply side. That's going to matter here in a minute. We're just going to cut this. Now I'll tell you, the reason this tape measure is here, I'm going to strip these back about an inch and a half. I mean, don't have to be real, real precise here. Um, when you're cutting this insulation, uh, one thing you want to remember is don't cut all the way through it. Just cut it until you can bend it back and forth and break it. That way you don't risk 
damaging these conductors or the insulation underneath. Pro tip, again, inch and a half strip on this guy. And then we're just going to strip all these. I believe this is a 14 gauge cord. All right, gang, next thing we're going to do is get these through these waterproof glands. Get that through, give yourself plenty of room to work. And I just snug these up so that they're not flopping around. We're going to move these later on, so don't worry about it. Okay, now we're going to get some crimping done. The black and the white wire, which, by the way, um, if the cord set is in the U.S. standard wire colors, you will have the hotline is the black and the neutral is the white. And green is obviously ground. If you're dealing with wires that are based on the international standard, brown is going to be your hot, and blue is going to be the neutral. Yeah, way to have standards for everybody. Works perfect. Anyway, first thing we're going to do is put these ends on. Now, I know I'm using a... Um, a right angle spade lug here and only reason I'm using it is to save space inside the box. A regular spade lug is going to work just fine. Um, the ones that have a longer standoff or strain relief um, will be more challenging to fit in there. You might have to bend them up. But I kind of like these and I happen to have the crimper for them from a previous life. So that's what I'm going to use, but you certainly can use any type of quarter inch spade lug you want. And again, the white and the black get the spade lugs because that's what's going through the switch. All right, there we go. That's done. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to bring these grounds together with a splice. Always pull test your crimps. Make sure you did that well enough so that it doesn't pull out and burn your house down. Okay, now this is a self-fusing splice. So I am going to take a minute right now, put some heat on it. Anyway, that gets our ground through there. Now we come to the switch. This part's really easy. Nothing, nothing crazy going on here. What you want to remember, though, is the incoming power, which in this is this side. This is the incoming power. If you put the incoming power into the short side, this side here where the connectors are very close to the edge. If you put it in there, the light will come on only when the switch is closed, which is kind of what you want. Um, if you put it on the other side, if you bring the input, input power on the long side, then it's going to be illuminated all the time. And honestly, the light's not really... Uh, that bright anyway, so it really doesn't matter, but I'm going to make mine so that the power comes in on the non-LED side. So we're going to have one go that way and one go that way. See how they're switched like that? And then this one is going to go on the other side. 
and we need don't don't cross these up uh, with each other. You want to make sure that if you've got black on this side, you have black on this side of the switch. Same with the whites, the neutrals. You want to come in on this side and come out on that side. There we go. Our switch is wired. Now we're just going to loosen up these glands. I bring these down to the black part of the insulations about even with the end of the gland. Give them a little tighten down. The rubber grommet in there will crush down and seal against that wire. Again, you know, this thing, is, these certainly are not waterproof. So, you know, the waterproof switch is probably a little overkill, but honestly, I thought it looked kind of nice. Next thing we're gonna do is get this cover situated, and then we're gonna put our screws in. I'm gonna loosen these up, just get a little more slack. There we go. That's good. Now they give you Nice little packet of screws in there. Dump those out on the work table here. And then got a nice big squishy gasket here, so no need to really crush these. Just apply a nice even pressure. And that's it. There we've got a switch. Let's test it out and make sure it works. All right. Here's our power supply. We're in the off position. Plug that in. Get us the right flavor of electricity here. See, no sparks, no explosions. Power supplies off. Now you can just hear the fan. I also have an LED light on there. And you can see the switch is illuminated, but it's just not very bright. And it goes off when you turn it off. Now, if we want to really hear this thing come on and off, we can hook it up to a compressor because when you pull out power, those fans are going to come on. Let's see how it works. There we go. Okay, that's option number one. It looks cool. You could actually mount it like right on the cover there. Um, make it kind of like it should have been from the factory. I mean, this this power supply was never meant to be used like out in the wild. It's meant to go in a chassis and have other things in between it and the user. But, you know, these are not expensive compressors. So the corners they cut um, save you money. Anyway, uh, this is the pretty cord set, as I like to call it. Um, Really good strain reliefs here uh, and bushings, or sometimes they're called glands. And you retain the entirety of your original cord. Well, let's take a look at option number two. Much simpler, slightly cheaper, um, and ideal for the, uh, for the lazier gentleman among us. Okay, friend, the other way you can solve this without any tools and no assembly time, um, I don't think it's nearly as elegant. Uh, and it also doesn't really provide any good way to mount it, but it is definitely a heavy duty rugged switch. This switch has uh, an IEC male and an IEC female at each end. Um, it's all kind of bolted together. Uh, it, it's a nice unit and it is less expensive than the uh, U assemble version. Let's get this plugged in there. And make sure we're off. 
plug that into our standard GX cord set. And now we've got a switch and it's lighted <laughs> and it is brighter than the other one. But um, to me, it doesn't look as cool. It's not as easy to mount, but uh, it certainly does have the benefit of being portable. You can you can unplug it from your from this IEC cord set, by the way, that's electrical or international, IEC is International Electrotechnical Committee. And they're an industrial, an industri well, they're an international standards association. They're the ones that give us this lovely connector style here. Anyway, uh, the IEC just plugs in there and you're good to go. Again, slightly less money, not as nice, nice looking, I don't think, but uh, anyway, that's all I've got in this episode. Thanks for watching. And by the way, affiliate links for everything are down below this video. Uh, so you can, you can browse around, take a look at which way you want to go. Either one works the same. I think they're both just as safe. As long as you assemble the uh, option one correctly, you'll be fine. And uh, be a light in the darkness, friends. And we'll see you again real soon. Thank you.